you're looking for a great YouTube network to join, apply for full screen with the link in the description. To trade your games in for a better value, use leaptrade.com and use Broken Games HD as a referral. All right, what's going on, everybody? So this is my Sony PlayStation 2015 E3 press conference review. I know a lot of you are looking forward to what I have to say about it. I was present at this conference. I was I was actually in the fourth row in the middle seat, so I had really good seats, pretty much front and center. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed the conference. I think you know a lot of people, and I agree, are saying that this is the best overall E3 conference. Um, but let's get right into Sony's. So Sony, they started off with one of their most anticipated games. People have been waiting for this for what seems to be close to a decade, The Last Guardian. It was rumored they would finally show it, and they started off the show with it, which was an incredibly you know smart idea don't make us wait any longer come right out the gate with it that yes we are still working on last guardian it is not dead after many of us believed it was dead and had every reason to, to believe it was dead and it was a great way to great way to start off the conference and get everybody in the crowd excited and i can tell you since i was there live everybody went crazy when they saw uh his his fuwaita's Fuwe, name i might be saying his name wrong Every, you know, everybody went crazy when we saw the, f the little feather or a piece of fur because we recognized that and we saw his name and everybody in the crowd went crazy. Um, the gameplay for Last Guardian looks good. Some people can't really resonate uh, with, with, or uh, relate to the gameplay or don't see what the hype is. I'll put it this way. If you never played some of the Team Eco uh, Sony Japan games, then you probably wouldn't understand. If you never played, for example, Shadow of the Colossus or Eco, Shadow of the Colossus is one of my favorite games of all time. Top five easily. One of, I did, you know, a playthrough beating all the bosses on my, I think it was my previous channel or it might have been this channel before I had to get rid of some videos. But one of the best games I've ever played hands down. So, you know, once you play a game like that and you know it's being made by the same team and it has, you know, the, the same spirit as that game, you, you're just hyped for it. You know, so um, the game is exactly what I expected it to be and I'm definitely looking forward to, uh, you know, getting getting to see more gameplay and looking forward to the game finally coming out uh, in 2016. Next was Horizon. Horizon was hands down the most impressive thing in my opinion to be shown at E3. We all know Guerrilla Games was working on, on something new, right? But I didn't expect gameplay. I thought it would just be a little trailer. We would probably get some gameplay at the end of the year when I can tell you when uh, you know the, the trailer pretty much uh, the CGI and the somatics, um, cinematics ended and it, it trans um, it transferred over to gameplay. We were like, oh, the crowd went crazy. We couldn't believe it was you know because we didn't, most of us probably didn't expect gameplay. And I believe Guerrilla Games need, needs a round of applause. And you know, hats off to Guerrilla Games because you got to understand this is a studio that pretty much since its inception has made nothing but first person shooters that's all it's made for the last like decade or more all it's made it's is kill zone games so i can tell you that i was the most skeptical person when we when it was rumored that uh guerrilla games was making a type of rpg game i'm like i don't know they they don't know anything but first person shooter that's their world and they've seemed to create something that's within their element as far as uh, the concept goes, even though it's still a unique concept, it's prehistoric, but futuristic at the same time. And you know, with Killzone, they've dealt with the whole futuristic sci-fi world thing, so they kept that element in their games because that's what they like and that's what they're familiar with. And that was very smart. Create something new that hasn't exactly been uh, seen before a lot and you know make it yours and that's what they're doing with horizon the story looks interesting the graphics look good yeah it's gonna run at 1080p 30 frames per second i mean you you expect that from most most open world games on consoles if not all run at 30 frames per second um we're not exactly sure how open world this game is yet but it seems like that um and i don't think i don't i don't think there's any open world games on consoles that run at 60 frames per second at all you know i I can't think of one. Every one that, I've, that I know of um, that's come out, it's always been 30 frames, so I expected that. But like I said, hats off to Guerrilla Games because not a lot of people expected much from them, especially since, obviously, Killzone was on a decline for a, for a while now. And, uh, you know, a lot of people kind of slept on Guerrilla Games. We, we didn't know. If you would have told me that, we would have came out of E3 with a lot of people saying Horizon was the most impressive thing. 
out of E3 and it was made by Guerrilla Games, none of us would have believed you. None of us would have believed it. Not that they're not talented, but we didn't expect that. So Horizon looks amazing. So Sony starts off with The Last Guardian, they go right into Horizon, two amazing starts. Um, next they go into No Man's Sky, I got it, well, Hitman, that's third party, I'm not really gonna talk about that. Uh, no Man's Sky, um, I still can't see what the hype around this game is, I still don't know what this game is about, you can explore. It seems to be one of those arbitrary games that you can just go explore and find stuff and do this. It's, type of, it's one of those like freedom type games, this doesn't really have an actual objective, it's not a focused objective, it's just do whatever you want. If it's, it's a game to, it seems to be one of those games for gamers who just like freedom, who just want to go do stuff, who, who aren't told don't like being told what to do in a game just give me a world and let me do stuff it's it seems to be one of those games me i can't say i'm exactly impressed by it next is uh dreams by media molecule media molecule is known to be one of those um studios who makes these very strange games you know out of the box games obviously they made a uh, little big planet which i was never a fan of now their their next game is dreams which i can't say i'm going to be a fan of it have no interest in it in, in it one once again it's just one of those out of uh you know thinking out of the box games um i applaud them for doing something different but like i said doing something different isn't always the best thing to do if it's not interesting and i can't say i'm like dreams okay sure but not impressed not interested so, you know, they kind of, and the thing about Sony's press conference is they had a really good press conference, but they had a, they had these really high points, and then they had some low points also. You know, the thing with Microsoft, Microsoft was consistent throughout their whole conference. They didn't have as many high points as Sony, but they didn't have the low points either. They were just consistent all the way through. Sony had these really low points, like with, uh, you know, the um, like I said, with the dreams, uh, and then they went into Firewatch, don't care, No Man's Sky didn't really care, Hitman didn't really care. I mean, I like Hitman, but you know, it's third party, I'm not really considering that too much in their conference. And then they went into two of the games that I despise, Destiny and Call of Duty. I absolutely hate Destiny, y'all know that. So the fact that they even spent one second talking about Destiny made me hate them for a second. But and and then Call of Duty play they have a, uh, Activision has a new deal with Sony. Uh, Matt packs go first on PlayStation 4. See this stuff is business wise it's extremely smart. But for my individual experience, I could care less because Sony and Sony is making a ton of money off Destiny and Call and, and Call of Duty. Like even though they're like nine games or nine years too late because xbox and microsoft they got the the biggest benefit out of call of duty because that was when it was at it was at its prime now even though call of duty is nowhere the monster where it used to be it still sells a great amount so sony can still take advantage of it there's still um some money to be had uh you know from them having this call of duty deal but me don't care um assassin's creed it, it you know like i said i don't care about assassin's creed anymore some people do i i definitely don't i feel like that series needs to end so as you can see this they're at like a like at like our low point right here like a lull with these games they're talking about so the middle section was really like uh kind of dry for me um but then they bring it back up final fantasy 7 remake I can tell I have the my live reaction and the crowd live reaction recorded. I can tell you I almost passed out. I lie to you not. I almost passed out. I needed a I need some I needed somebody to fan me and I needed some water. I damn near passed out when I when I saw Cloud Sword and Barrett's arm. Oh my goodness. It's another thing similar to The Last Guardian. If you didn't play Final Fantasy 7 when it was out, you know when it just came out, you wouldn't understand. It's one of the greatest games ever made in my opinion it's absolutely genius gameplay amazing story amazing graphics for its time really good once again one of my easily in my top five games of all time it's just crazy how do you give me like so many elements of some of my favorite games ever in one conference that's why this is such a big deal and such a good conference for me final fantasy 7 i must have beat that game like five times when it came out um, i absolutely loved it now the thing about it is if you go back and play it now if you've never played it before you probably won't get that same feeling you won't experience the same magic if you play it now but but then 
oh my goodness you have no idea people and everybody who played it back then will tell you it is it, the, the game will blow the game blew your mind back then so I'm definitely excited for that. Come, it's coming to PlayStation 4 first, even though it's not an exclusive. Um, then Shenmue. I played Shenmue 2. I can't. Uh, I never. I never beat it. I can't say it was. I'm like okay, hype for it. Like I was hyped for Last Guardian or uh, Final Fantasy or, or Horizon. It's not a huge deal for me. I backed the project because I'm. I'm a. Um, you know, I'm a big. Uh, I'm a big believer in backing these projects on Kickstarter if I believe they're going to be good. Get good games. Like I backed Mighty Number no. Nine, Project Ukulele, that spiritual, that blood spiritual game. I forgot exactly what it's called. So yeah, I backed this too. I'm a big believer in, in backing these games. So Shenmue, that's a big deal for a lot of people. They Sony brought some like three of the biggest games that people have been waiting for for an extremely long time that's why people are saying they won because even though they had a lot of low points three of the biggest games that people have been waiting for for the longest time ever were in the Sony conference so you know that's why it's such a big deal then they went into um, bat some Batman uh, uh, content like I said this third party PlayStation view they got me interested in PlayStation view even though I don't use any of these uh, channel streaming services but they said they were they're the first um, channel streaming streaming um, service to let you pick individual channels or something like that so that's pretty cool Disney Infinity everybody in there was over 17 I don't know who was interested in this then Battlefield I mean excuse me Battlefront um, which was also at the EA conference and I think also at the Xbox conference um, so that looks good also third party then they showed uncharted which you know looks it's obviously not open world um, but it's uh, oh what, what did they what do they consider the game it's much more open than uncharted than the past uncharted games were so it's uh, open linear I guess you can consider it and they've you know obviously uh, introduced this driving element in the game this driving mechanic that looks really good the game looks amazing um, the 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 environment right and and the physics in the game you the when the enemies were shooting at drake nothing was a static environment damn near when the, when they shot at you you saw the bullet holes going um you know right above his head opening up the environment he ran by some sandbags the sandbags actually um deflated and they were no longer good for cover so he started taking damage his bullet physics and the destructible environment was just amazing and the gunfights uh, felt felt so intense it was just really good and one of the biggest deals because I pay attention to detail one of the biggest deals and the biggest things I saw in this video was when Sully and Drake were in cover a lot of people probably didn't notice this or think it was a big deal but Sully and Drake were in cover and Nath and, and Drake needed to go around Sully because they were on the same piece of cover Drake got off of cover he still it like mechanically he's still attached to the cover he got off of cover and went around Sully that's a big deal a lot of you may not have realized it but play damn near 95 percent of any third person shooter right now cover based third person shooter and see what happens when you have a NPC on cover and you move towards the NPC the NPC e you either get stuck you either have to come off and, and you have to come off of cover and go around the NPC or you pretty much clip and phase into and go through the NPC play go ahead play any of them I guarantee you you're not gonna see that happen so the attention to detail and that animation that they put in there just blew my mind I was like oh my it's so simple but it's so big because it's not something you see in gaming like I'm saying like I said it's not it's, it might not be the first game to do that but you don't see that in third-person shooters it, it's very rare after the conference we also learned great news this is something that I I'm not saying I caused this of course I doubt I caused it this is probably something they were gonna do regardless of uh, me campaigning for it they announced that the Uncharted uh, for single player was going to be 30 frames per second but the multiplayer which really needs more frames obviously for better uh, smoothness and gameplay will be 60 frames per second that is wonderful news I'm happy about that I'm, I'm, I'm happy I'm happy so we get to play 60 frames multiplayer 30 frames uh, single player I'm cool with that um, and yeah that dead uncharted uh, for gameplay was just 
it was thrilling. The only thing that was missing from this conference that I felt should have been there is God of War. Like, at least a God of War teaser. I'm like, because I feel like... I feel like it should have already, you know, honestly, I feel like it should have been teased from last year. If it's, it's definitely going to be next, it's definitely going to be at next year's E3. I'm completely convinced of that from Sony Santa Monica. Um, but, um, you know, I felt like that should have been there, at least like a little teaser. Not no gameplay, just at the end to top it off, just show or, you know, let us hear Kratos voice something. So I felt that like that should have been been there, but overall Sony's conference was really good. Even though it had its had its low points, it had really high points. Definitely one of their best conferences ever. So that's my review on it. Let me know what y'all think. I'm out of here. Peace.